You had better wake there up are people and who are guiding you. Congre so you Congressman Paul, uh, yet another question about electability. Uh, do you have any, sir? There's always the question as to whether or not <laughs> you are in fact viable. As to whether or not you are in fact viable. Whether or not you are in fact viable. <laughs> uh, the, with the rest of the Republicans on this stage, has raised questions about whether or not you can actually win the general, the, the Republican nomination, sir. Well, we've only had two little primaries so far, so it's pretty premature to decide which one is going to be the candidate. But, you know, when, when you think about it, if you measured everything I've ever said, every vote I've ever taken against the Constitution, you know, I'm a strict constitutionalist. So are you suggesting the Republicans should write me off because I'm a strict constitutionalist? I'm the most conservative member here. I have voted, you know, against more spending and wasting government than anybody else. So you're suggesting that I'm not electable and the Republicans don't want me because I'm a strict fiscal conservative? Because I believe in civil liberties? Why should we not be, be defending civil liberties? And why should we not be de talking about foreign policy that used to be the part of the Republican Party? Mr. Republican Robert Taft didn't even want us to be in NATO. And you're saying now that we have to continue to borrow money from China to finance this empire that we can't afford? I, let me see if I get this right. We, we need to borrow $10 billion from China, and then we give it to Musharraf, who's a military dictator who overthrew an elected government, and then we go to war, we lose all these lives promoting democracy in Iraq. I mean, what's going on here? And you're saying, and you're saying that this isn't appealing to Republicans? Where did, where did this come about? I think the, this is a Republican message. I defend the platform. It used to say we got rid of the Department of Education. It doesn't say that. Now, we as Republicans went and doubled the size of the Department of Education. So where, where have we gone? I think we've lost our way. But then the insinuation that I am less Republican because of that? Congressman, thank you very much. We make a comment. I, I, I'm not interested in trading with Al-Qaeda. All they want to trade is burqas. I don't want to travel with them. They like one-way tickets. <laughs> I, I'm not interested in trading with Al-Qaeda. All they want to trade is burqas. I don't want to travel with them. They like one-way tickets. <laughs> talking exactly about that because that's what we have been doing. We used to support Saddam Hussein and we used to be allied with Osama bin Laden. <laughs> and what I want to do is stop that. Who are our friends one day turn out to be our enemies. Right now we finally got rid of uh, Saddam Hussein and what are we doing now? We're rearming the Sunnis, the old henchmen of Saddam Hussein. And what are they going to do with those, all those weapons we're giving the Sunnis in, in, the, in Baghdad? So look out, believe me, that war is not over. And right now they're demanding more troops in Afghanistan and we're, some people, like the senator, he thinks we should be there for a hundred years if necessary. How can he commit the young people of this world five more generations to be in Iraq if it's necessary? I say it's Again, time to come home. Ron Paul. The record shows they're standing up for him. Our troops have spoken. And Ron Paul is the choice for their next commander-in-chief. But it is our duty as loyal Americans to shut up and shut up publicly. Do we expect every American to support our military, and if they can't do that, to shut up? Think that the U.S. or U.N. forces should have moved into Baghdad? No. Why not? Because if we'd gone to Baghdad, we would have been all alone. There wouldn't have been anybody else with us. It would have been a U.S. occupation of Iraq. None of the Arab forces that were willing to fight with us in Kuwait were willing to invade Iraq. Uh, once you got to Iraq and took it over and took down Saddam Hussein's government, then what are you going to put in its place? That's a very volatile part of the world. And, and if you take down the central government in Iraq, you can easily end up seeing pieces of Iraq fly off. Uh, part of it uh, 
the Syrians would like to have to the west, uh, part of eastern Iraq, uh, the Iranians would like to claim, fought over for eight years. In the north, you've got the Kurds, and if the Kurds spin loose and join with the Kurds in Turkey, then you threaten the territorial integrity of Turkey. It's a, it's a quagmire if you go that far and try to take <laughs> Iraq. The other thing was casualties. Uh, everyone was impressed with the fact that uh, we were able to do our job with as few casualties as we had. But for the 146 Americans killed in action, and for their families, it wasn't a cheap war. And the question for the president, in terms of whether or not we went on to Baghdad and took additional casualties in an effort to get Saddam Hussein, was how many additional dead Americans is Saddam worth? And our judgment was uh, not very many, and I think we got it right. And even the president and vice president agreed to meet with the commission, but with a catch. They insisted on meeting together behind closed doors and not under oath. President, why are you and the vice president insisting on appearing together before the 9-11 commission? Because the 9-11 commission, commission wants to ask us questions. That's why we're meeting, and I look forward to meeting with them and answering their questions. Uh, why you're appearing together rather than separately, which was their request? Because it's a good chance for both of us to answer questions that the 9-11 Commission is uh, looking forward to asking us, and I'm looking forward to answering them. Let's see. I want to thank the chairman and vice chairman for giving us a chance to share views on, a, on, on, on different subjects. And they had a lot of good questions, and uh, it was... I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I took the time. What topic did the commissioners want to spend most of the time on? Uh, I, I really, I, probably best that I not go into the details of the conversation. The president and vice president of the United States, don't you think they should be able to stand up and, and, and speak their own words? They should go under oath. They should be, yeah, in public. Don't you think that the families deserve to have a transcript or to be able to see what Adam, you said? Adam, you asked me that question yesterday. I got the same answer, yeah. You and Lee Hamilton wrote in the New York Times today, you have no doubt that there was obstruction on the part of the CIA in preventing you and your panel, the 9-11 Commission, appointed by the President, approved by the Congress, from going forward with its investigation. Obstruction is a very serious word because it certainly leads to the possibility of obstruction of justice, which is a crime. September 11th, If we start bombing Iran, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to work. We're not going to achieve decapitation, regime change, all that. Um, what will happen is the Iranians will respond, and we will feel the pain instantaneously, which will prompt the Bush administration to move to phase two, which will have to be boots on the ground. And we will put boots on the ground. We will surge a number of divisions in, probably through Azerbaijan, down the Caspian Sea coast, in an effort to push the regime over. And when they don't push over, we now have 40,000 troops trapped. We have now reached the definition of significant numbers of U.S. troops in harm's way, and there is no reserve to pull them out. There's no more cavalry to come riding to the rescue. And at that point in time, my concern is that we will use nuclear weapons to break the backbone of Iranian resistance, and it may not work. But what it will do is this. It will unleash the nuclear genie. And so for all those Americans out there tonight who say, you know what, taking on Iran's a good thing. I just told you if we take on Iran, we're going to use nuclear weapons. And if we use nuclear weapons, the genie ain't going back in the bottle until an American city is taken out by an Islamic weapon in retaliation. So tell me, you want to go to war with Iran, pick your city. Pick your city. Tell me which one you want gone. Seattle, L.A., Boston, New York, Miami. Pick one, because at least one's going. And that's something we should all think about before we march down this path of insanity that George Bush has us headed on. Fuck this now for super fucking highway. What the fuck is the matter with you, George Bush? I mean, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to kill every fucking job? Fuck you, here in America! Mexican truck drivers and fuck the man for superhighway. Fuck you, President Bush!